<clears throat> okay, so um, I was having trouble making a video this morning. I don't know why. It won't post. Uh, can't really do much. Wait a minute. Let me move this thing. Let me move this. There we go. I think that's better. Anyway, uh, at the same, what I was trying to talk about, excuse me, in my video was Mahitable. This poor creature behind me. Oh, God. All right. This poor creature behind me who I've made many, many videos about. It's Mahitable, the tattooed lady. She's going to a couple in North Carolina. And I've thought I've had her finished about 50 times, and I haven't. So today, when I woke up, I realized why. I looked at the figure, and this the, her hip has really been bothering me. When you see it in the horizontal form, her hip is extended, uh, almost to a cartoonish level, and it distorted the figure enough where I'm sitting here painting and repainting the face, trying to get the face right, and what's really happening is this hip was affecting her sequined crotch under panty things, which was affecting her rib cage, which was affecting her shoulder position, which is affecting her head. Hey, honey. It's Puppet. Puppet's walking between my feet. Anyway, it was just throwing everything off. So this morning, I turned it from the horizontal, where we've seen her, the two panels like this, to vertical. So I could reconfigure the figures and try and get her right, get her better balanced. I've also been playing with the colors and trying to make her pop. So I've been adding white, which I don't like to use a lot. I don't find it very effective. I find it incredibly amateurish. That's sometimes basically necessary to highlight and to highlight shadowing in other colors. So I added white, added whites throughout her tattoo work with the teals and blues, um, evening out the legs and the torso and the arms. I've also highlighted her fingers a bit with white, highlighted her ring, highlighted her fur, and also repositioned her fur just a tad now that the hip is better. What I did was I cut a good three quarters of an inch off of her extended hip and also tried to feel where the bones would be. Which is difficult because her sequined um, underpant things are riding, riding a little high so it's, it's, it's a, it can make, be tricky. She still has kind of a stilted, <laughs> kind of a, a midgety feel to her, a small person uh, stature to her. But I like it. I like the fact that she's slightly abstract and off. It makes it more interesting, more compelling. But, I, oh, I, I know where I was going. I also took other colors that were in her legs and extended them up through here, which I hadn't done before, really, on a serious level, and brought them into her face, and then went back through with the colors in her face and brought them down through her body so that she, she is more balanced. Obviously, this isn't done. I'm still going to do even out the sequins a bit, highlight the sequins more, like the reference material, and then we're closer to done than I have been. You know, that hip really had me focused on the face and restructuring her face and recoloring her face to a point where I've been working on her face for months and touching the rest of her body, but not really concentrating, not trying to see and feel what was wrong, but turning it from horizontal to vertical, I could see it. Because even though the, the reference material is presenting itself one way, and the viewer most likely be looking at it that one way, it is not going to be balanced if the artist, illustrator, painter is only viewing their work from one direction. You have to take it and turn it to feel the balance, to feel the realness, and to be able to focus on more than making it look real, making it feel real, making it feel like the character. You've got to be able to take it and turn it and put it upside down and all around the room and really check. Now I want to, I'm going to address this as delicately as I can. I have another issue that I want to address, something that I've addressed in other videos. Um, you'll have to excuse me too, by the way, it's almost noon, but I've been painting so much I haven't uh, showered yet, so half in pajamas from the last two weeks and smelly, but thank God you can't smell me. Uh, I just wanted to go forward with this, with this idea. Now two, three times a month I'm contacted by fans 
And I hate that term, especially now because everyone who can take a picture of themselves says, I have fans. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. But I do hear from people all around the world who watch the videos, who love my, really sincerely do love my artwork. Um, I hear from people in all over Europe, Australia. I've heard from people in uh, both North, believe it or not, and South Korea. I've heard from people all over South America, Argentina, Argentina, Colombia, Mexico, uh, of course Canada. I've heard from people everywhere. And almost every day I receive a piece of, of mail, uh, um, messages, emails from people. But also several times a month, I hear from people who love my work so much that they want to buy a piece. So they'll ask me about it, how they can get, you know, how they can get a piece. And several times a month, the past six months, this is what occurs. Uh, obviously not every time, but it's, it, it is exhausting. It happens so much. It sends me into a, into a major tailspin. Uh, inevitably, I'll hear from people two, three, sometimes four, five times a month. I love your work. How can I get some? How can I get a piece? Blah, blah, blah. Big fan. Watch all your videos. Love you. Love your work. I'll put them in contact with the correct people, and right now I work very closely with Jay Louise at Blue Egg Gallery in Miami. We work very close together because it's hard to find a gallery or gallerist who is honest, who hasn't stolen my work, which was a pattern for several years, um, just taking my work and, and, and hiding it. Um, that's happened many times. Um, but he's honest, he's loyal, he's kind. Uh, I never have to worry that he's made a sale and is withholding money, which is something that happens with all galleries. I never have to worry about it. So to, we, we work very closely together, and anytime anyone contacts me, I have them contact Jay. I do work with other people. I work with um, a, a place called Found in Providence, Rhode Island. They have a couple, couple pieces, and I'd love to work more extensively with them, something you know, hopefully we, we can do soon. Uh, I work with a pop-up gallery in Newark, New Jersey. Um, I have work in New York. Uh, that's, that's a long story, but I have work in New York and in Israel. But Jay has, Jay has been um, just s such a source of, source of strength for me that I do not make any deals. I will not talk to anyone without him. I can't. I just can't. He has been fair and kind and loyal and, and so supportive of me and fair. Decent and fair. And that is very rare, very hard to find. I think in any, in any business relationship, uh, but especially for artists, because in this culture, artists aren't valued. In the American culture, um, art is seen as, a, as something fun and silly that people do on the side until they die and then you buy their work for millions and it becomes a ridiculous useless circus <laughs> where you can't get any more work out of the artist so what's the point but anyway um jay that's a whole another diatribe uh so i always send people to jay but two three four five times a month the people who write me and say i love your work i want your work blah 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 i'll send them to jay and then it turns into a bullying uh tug of war they're trying to guilt me and bully him into cutting the work in half or less. Um, and like I said, it doesn't happen once or twice or once in a while, but it happens all the time. And people, you know, the, peop the, the potential maybe I might buyers um, oftentimes mistake this um, behavior with being cunning and shrewd. Um, I had one guy, I think it was last month or six weeks ago, I've seen all your videos. I love your work. I'm a big fan. I, I, I love the way it's progressed. I've learned so much from you. Blah, blah, blah. The usual stuff. So I put him in touch with Jay. And it immediately went from, I can't wait to buy, you know, to own something of yours, to uh, he wanted about half off. He wanted to, uh, he wanted everything shipped for free. And then, after bullying, I mean, a lot of bullying and demanding. It was, oh, and by the way, you do this for me now and you'll have the opportunity 
to have a commit to uh, um, excuse me you do this for me now and I'll come back and commission a piece later I have no idea why anyone would believe that that any of us that we should put up with that type of behavior um, give me what I want at my price because that's the way I want it and by the way you're gonna pay to ship it so we're losing more and more and more and more money taking away from any way to support my gallery any way to support my artwork any way to support me and to get me on a better platform and to create value in, in the work that he supposedly wanted to purchase and then in this commission why, why anyone would believe I would want to do a commission after that is beyond beyond my understanding you know you're a piece of shit you're a piece of garbage I love your work all at the same time by the way I want you to do this other thing for nothing um, because I'm special you're going to do it uh, before that, I had a fellow that I'd known for, uh, we'd been childhood friends, who um, tried to guilt and bully me into not uh, going through Jay, doing it on the side as a inside job, and paying me uh, pretty much less than half, I think it was, of what the, uh, what the value of the work is, because we're old pals, and... Um, then it turned into this big bullying tug of war. The usual, the usual stuff. Artists know what I'm talking about. Love your work, love your work. By the way, you're a piece of crap, and so sell it to me for a hundred dollars. You know that type of thing. Um, it's really hard to number one tolerate it, to have to tolerate it. Number two, it's really hard to work under those circumstances. Because here I've got my head of all. And I've got this lovely couple who is being patient with me while I deal with another issue that has been affecting me mentally, emotionally, physically. You know, I haven't had a vehicle to get around because it's been at the shop for three months. <laughs> and it still doesn't run. I finally have it home and it still doesn't run, but at least it's here and I feel better. So I can work on the hittable now. Um, even her out, make her correct, get her ready to get shipped at, to North Carolina. So I've got these lovely people, the Mahitable people, <sighs> while I have people who are telling me, love your work, big fan, you're a piece of crap, sell it to me for nothing. These people, I'm very, very fortunate because I have a number of these people where they see the value of the work. They understand that this could be the thing that transforms artwork in the future. I, I've been told over and over again by curators and museum people, this is a painting of the future. This is painting in the future, and you're doing it now. They understand the value of that. I've been told over and over again by complete strangers, your work is like Van Gogh's, where it's transform transformational. Sorry, I'm patting myself on the back right now. But it's something, ow, ow, okay. Something that hasn't been seen before. Totally new techniques and ideas. Completely new, completely fresh. I have those people who see the legacy portfolio building. They see how this could be a valuable investment. And then I have people who say, I want you to do this commission for me for almost nothing. I want it this size, and I want a portrait of me and my wife, and I want it done by now, and I want it, and I want it, and I want it. And it's the I want it, and you will do as I say, that are totally soul crushing. And they take away from the technique. They take away from the legacy portfolio. They take away from the legacy technique, the transformative technique, the technique that makes my work mine, or any artist. So I talked to, I was talking to Jay. I have other people I work with understand this perfectly. And they're not, they, not that Jay doesn't, but they understand this, that we have to stop saying I will sell it to you. No, I'm, I'm not saying anything about Jay. Jay is very much on my side. But I think as artists, we need to stop saying, okay, you're right. I'm lucky to have you handing me a dollar. That's so awesome. You are devaluing, as artists, we are devaluing ourselves. We are devaluing our work. And we are not making ourselves self-sustaining and supportive.
self-supportive, able to support ourselves. And I think that's usually the end game with most people, with most professional artists, so that you're not working nine to five and, and putting all your energy into making someone else money. You're putting your focus in, you, you want to be self-sustaining so that you can put your focus on your work and build your career and your life and give it meaning. Give the work meaning, give your life meaning and have a legacy portfolio that you can pass on that will hopefully be of value and of greater value than when you first started at 18 or 20 or 30 or 40. So there's my big struggles. And it's something that's been bugging me and I've made videos about before and I'm just saying it again. If we, are, if we as, if, as buyers, people come in and try and undercut and devalue and demean and just treat with total disregard and disrespect the artists that they supposedly love, they are undercutting the totality of the life's work. They are undercutting the, the artist to the point where they feel so devalued and so demeaned and so disregarded and so disrespected that they're not creating their best work. And that's what we want, is the best work in the portfolio. The best and transforming. We want the Iowa Ways to keep growing and keep putting out work because people believe in their strength. There's a wonderful artist named Vanessa German and I am deeply glad, I'm so glad, the world is catching on to her ideas but she's strong and supported, supported enough where she can say no. She has a show going on right now with The Factory in New York. She has pieces in The Factory show in New York. Hail, all hail Vanessa German. She's in museums. She, I've been to her shows. She, she makes me cry. She's brilliant. She is able to express racism, slavery, the deep hatred um, that she has and that her culture should have for the whites, for white people who have held them down. She's able to express it in one tiny sculpture more than anyone else I've ever seen or read or experienced. I've seen her whole armies of her sculptures of power figures wind up and they, they just level you. They level you. And she's able to bring out that power because she's able to say, no, I will not dance to your tune. This is my song. This is my artwork. And I am expressing it my way. She is supported. She has the strength. And I am deeply glad. I am Deeply, deeply grateful the world has Vanessa German. I also hope to experience that type of support one day, that type of, um, and to have the type of strength that she does, which I doubt I will because I cave like a Labrador. I always think that I've pooed on the rug like a Labrador and ready to take the blame for anything. But we'll see. Maybe one day I'll get there. Maybe one day I'll have the support. But if you get a chance anyway, regardless of me, go see Vanessa German, German's piece or pieces at the factory in New York, the factory show. She, she will blow you away. Her work is being carried by most museums now, uh, a lot of museums right next to Kahinda Wiley. That is how extraordinary this woman is. Really extraordinary. Um, blows me away. Anyway, I'm gonna get I'm gonna go shower now and get back to the hittable. But those were a couple of things I wanted to talk about: restructuring her figure by putting her on the vertical, and then um, I guess putting our foot down as artists, putting our foot down and saying, "No, no, you can't. No, I won't. No matter how hard you try and bully me." Yeah, this one guy from childhood. I've had to block him from a couple of social sites now because it's. It, has, it hasn't stopped. I had another woman who was popping up and trying to bully me on 
I think 13 different sites that I'm on so when I say it goes on all the time it does and when I say it's endless it is endless anyway time to shower time to uh, paint my hittable and there we go let's let's keep going okay as artists let's build our culture let's build a community that is strong and hopefully working together um, to better our lives and the lives around us all right take care